Are you ready for two new NVIDIA GPU generations? In less than a year, I bet to believe you are. We got a PlayStation showcase that showed off a lot of incredible games that honestly I'm really excited for. And somebody did deep diving thermal testing on that new PS5 and it actually does a little bit better. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So sit back, relax. Let me know what you're having for your breakfast. Not necessarily this morning. I know you can watch in different time zones and at different times of the day, but what are you having for breakfast this afternoon, evening, good night? <laughs> <laughs> While you're doing that, let me tell you about NVIDIA's RTX 30 Super Refresh because it's expected that that's gonna launch in January 2022 according to two new leakers who are saying that that's when we're getting the new Ampere Refresh, which is going to be the next generation of cards that should be coming out. It should still be on Samsung's production, which might still leave it with that. It's kind of still, you know, uh, not enough stock going around, but it will be coming out to desktops as well as laptops in January, as well as the fact that we should be getting a GA103 chip, which is gonna come out to both of those and make it so that we have Ampere Phase 2 and new super cards that are out there. There hasn't been a whole lot of like leaked information as far as how these cards are going to perform, how much better they are. There's like been some slight detail of the RTX 3090 Super and how that might even launch this year, but not a ton in the way of benchmarks. So it remains to be seen if this is actually going to be happening. But the rumor right now is that it's gone into production this quarter and we're just waiting to see when Nvidia is going to actually announce this out to people. But on top of that, we got multiple sources indicating that Nvidia is going to launch the RTX 40 series, Ada Loveless GPUs this time next year in roughly October. So that's two GPU generations in 2022 with all of the leaks and indication being that Nvidia is gonna go back to TSMC for these GPUs and that might loosen up some of the supply chain issues, but it's also essentially when all of these computer companies are telling us to expect when the chip shortage should get better. So the RTX 40 series in just over a year is actually a pretty good cadence. It's not actually that much sooner than how Nvidia did things with their 20 series. We had got 20, then 20 Super, which happened about a year later, and then the 30 series came about a year later after that. So shortening that down to roughly nine months is honestly not too much closer together, but Ada Love GPUs are expected to hit mass production in the middle of 2022. And so having them launch in Q4 does make a lot of sense as far as getting all of that stuff ramped up to production. I know that when I read the comments, I hear a lot of you are saying that you're waiting for the next gen. This generation's kind of just ruined and lost on you, especially with all the scalper pricing, but which next gen are you talking about? You talking about the 30 Super Series or are you talking about the RTX 40 Series? Let me know down in the comments. Which GPU generation are you waiting for? Or is it just whatever you can get your MSRP hands on? Or what if Nvidia does the sneaky where they just raise the prices and then the MSRP is now out of whack? You want the RTX 4060? Well, that's gonna cost you a cool 750 directly to Nvidia's Founders Edition. Are you gonna, are you gonna abide that? Let me know what you would do in that scenario, my friends. I can tell you what researchers are doing in the scenario where people don't actually install ransomware protection on their computers. Well, they're trying to bake malware protection in at the SSD level before it ever even can just encrypt your data and make it so that you have to pay out Bitcoin to all of these different ransomware hacks that are happening. And it does come with a slight performance loss, roughly 17% on latency, but 8% in lower throughput. However, it does protect in what they said, 100% efficacy whilst reverting any encryption that's actually achieved within 10 seconds of the process's start. So they're using the SSD Insider++ Plus Plus in real world and in-house ransomware programs and seeing great success with this. Whether or not this is gonna roll out into any commercial application remains to be seen. However, there's a lot of upgrades that could be made with it, such as getting a higher performance ARM CPU or having hardware accelerators that make this better at detection and make it so that they can actually revert ransomware. But having protection built in at the hardware level could be a good thing. It could also potentially lead to issues down the line where you find out that had a vulnerability and so they hack that and now you got a double hacked SSD. But I'll tell you what I do if I got ransomware on my computer. I just reinstall Windows because I don't I don't keep anything locally. That's all that important. I just I just don't do it. I'll lose a day worth of work, which kind of sucks, but that's just hot news. What's with this slow vibe I'm giving off right now? We need to speed it up, just like Tesla sped up the Model S Plaid at, okay, I'm gonna butcher this because I've never heard this pronounced, which is just because I'm not in the car culture. I've only ever read this and like driven on it in Gran Turismo 4. Nürburgring, <laughs> I screwed that up. That's not even how I wanted to say it. Nürburgring, no, that's awful. Why am I saying, Nürburgring? Nürburgring? 
I'm so sorry. Anyways, Model S Plaid setting the fastest EV time of seven minutes and 30 seconds, which is the production record, shaving off the Porsche Taycan's time of nearly 12 seconds. Elon Musk tweeting this out, saying that this is just stock, bone stock on the unmodified Tesla Model S Plaid. They're gonna be running it with spoilers and extra tires and all that to see how far they can push it. But stock Model S Plaid officially the fastest EV in the world, not just in drag strips, but also in the German racetrack that I, my mouth cannot words on. And if you want to correct me down below in the comments, I would be ever so grateful so I can finally learn how this word's pronounced. I know I could have Googled it, but you guys are my Google. That's how much you mean to me. And how much does Bitcoin mean to the world? Let's find out in today's Crypto Stonks update. Recovering a little bit from its slide, Bitcoin up 1.64% to be at just under $47,000. Ethereum, however, dropping ever so slightly, 0.03%, having a little early morning snooze, dropping to around $3,400, but now sitting right around $3,500. Dogecoin up 1.35% to be at 25.6 cents. And then GameStop also landing up 0.2% to sit at 199.18. AMC also closing up 2.36% to sit at 48.52. But you know, all of these like meme stocks and Bitcoin, they're all just, it's pumped and dumped by bots. All right, that's what I hear on Twitter, but that might be a bot. And now Twitter's gonna allow me to know if it's a bot. They're labeling bots and bot accounts over on Twitter to let you know, hey, is this a good bot? Is this a bad bot? This works in some applications where it's like, clearly this is aggregated data that's just automatically getting pushed out. I actually love it in this implementation. If it, however, might potentially call out some like brands for like using bots to like act like they're real people. And then it says this was automated. That would be hilarious. I would love to see the first example of that happening. And I love to see dark mode implemented on things Google search, google.com, getting dark mode, finally. Yes, yes. You know what, I love dark mode so much. Freaking, let's dark mode hot news. Hot news off. Dark mode hot news, beautiful. You can change it by using the instructions that are currently on the screen. Now let's go ahead and talk about some trailers that actually happened that released. You know what, this is too dark. Let's go ahead and just turn on this light. Dark mode hot news for the rest. Or should I be backlit? I don't know, what's the best dark mode? Hot news on? Why did I inflect like it was a question? This is a little, this is, this is dark enough mode, right? Yeah. I talked about earlier in the week about how there was gonna be a Matrix Resurrections trailer that was supposed to drop yesterday. And oh my goodness, I kinda, I kinda want to see it. Not enough to go into the theaters. I'm definitely, I probably will get HBO Max for this, but the trailer sold me on the at least premise. Some of the shots in the trailer had me feeling a little iffy on the like editing production and like whether or not they're taking this in the right direction. But I will say, I, I, can, I can stand behind the reboot action that they're going with, at least from how it's being pitched in the trailer. I'm not gonna necessarily go see it in theaters, but I will spend just a few bucks to see it on HBO Max. But the big trailers that dropped yesterday were in Sony's PlayStation updates, and they have gotten me so excited. I'm just gonna go through the ones that I care about quickly. I'll leave links in the video description in case you wanna check these out. Square Enix Forspoken, which is supposed to come to the PS5 and PC in spring of next year, actually looks really good. The gameplay looks super smooth. I, oh, this is at two times speed. Of course it's looking smooth, but the motion and everything, this looks like a typical Square Enix game, but with a lot of fluid dynamics built into it. And I absolutely love that. I'm vibing with this. Gran Turismo 7 getting a release date of March 4, 2022. The Cars looking spectacular. Look at all of that ray tracing. It's gorgeous, has the arcade mode and everything that you could possibly want in a Gran Turismo game. Star Wars, Knight of the Old Republic, getting a remake for the PS5. As far as I recall, this is going to be a timed exclusive on PS5 with Sony paying for the publishing of this, but this will eventually come out to other platforms. A lot of people being excited on what is considered one of the best Star Wars games that has been made. And then Insomniac Games announcing Spider-Man 2 coming out in 2023 with also an appearance by Venom. This is actually really intriguing considering they just dropped Miles Morales. I wasn't expecting to see a Spider-Man 2 announcement so soon, but even more or less expecting I was of the things that I wasn't expecting. Insomniac's making a Wolverine Marvel game, which I am absolutely standing behind considering what they do with Spider-Man. I absolutely trust them with this. I would love to see this and play this potentially. I think Insomniac's doing a much better job with their Marvel IP than Eidos Montreal is. I just, what they did with Avengers, oof. And then seeing the Guardians the galaxy trailer not my vibe i would love to see wolverine though and then finally we got a god of war ragnarok trailer number one it's called god of war ragnarok which was the speculation behind it but now we also have details that this should be the end of the norse mythology section of god of war at least according to the post interview that was given by the game's director as well as cory balrog who's part of the balrog 
Barlog? I always mess up his name. Anyways, this is going to end in Ragnarok. Thor's gonna be part of it. Odin's gonna be part of it. I'm heckin' excited. The gameplay did make it look like they haven't necessarily updated the game engine to be like fully PS5. That does make a lot of sense considering it's coming out so close to the 2018 version and also it's uh, just so close to the launch of the PS5. Hopefully we do get this next year. It does look a lot more finished than I thought I was going to get here in late 2021. Then let's talk about the downfall of Stadia because a game that was shown off with PlayStation yesterday to Chia or Chia, I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation. It's no longer gonna be a Stadia console exclusive. It was announced in late 2020 and it was supposed to be on PC and Stadia. However, they announced that unfortunately their partnership with Stadia didn't work out. They're gonna be working with PlayStation and Epic Game Store. So yikes, Stadia not looking too good as the years progress. And it does look like the PS5 is looking too good as the years progress because somebody actually got their hands on the new PS5 that Austin Evans did a quick, just like tear down and exhaust temperature check of and they were able to get measurements of the SOC directly and they showed that the SOC actually does run at a much cooler temperature and the heatsink while being smaller is way more efficient. However, this does come with a few caveats. Number one, go check out the video by Hardware Busters International linked in the video description. Absolutely give them a view because they did the testing that was necessary in order to prove whether or not is this PS5 any better or worse. So one of the things to note is that between the two PS5s, both the launch version and the new version that Hardware Busters got, the fans are exactly the same. So that shows that the fan is not actually different from model to model, but is actually something that was reported on a while ago that some PS5s just have different fans. And this is not necessarily indicative of the new refresh that Sony's coming out with. However, they did find just like Austin Evans did that their heatsink is much smaller, but it did come with better cooling, 10 degrees Celsius better on the SOC from 51.15 on the old console to 40.08 on the new one. But that does come with the caveat that the VRAM as well as the VRM power delivery heated up more on the new console than the old console. The VRM was running at eight degrees Celsius hotter and the VRM power delivery was roughly running at one and a half degrees Celsius hotter. So this could potentially account for the extra temperature increase that Austin Evans was seeing in his video that certain things are running hotter on the inside. However, when it comes to the actual SOC die where the CPU and the GPU are housed, it's actually running a bit cooler, which means means that the heatsink is more efficient. However, it has been reported in the past that the PS5 could potentially suffer from VRM heat issues, which with the increase in temperatures that we're seeing on the new one could potentially be a bad sign. But when it comes to just the fact that because the heatsink on the new PS5 is about a pound smaller or two thirds of a pound smaller, it doesn't necessarily mean it's worse when it comes to the actual CPU and GPU die. You won't get worse boost clocks on it, at least according to this report. And they're gonna be coming out with more data as time progress, as they just change their sensor placement to get different temperatures and just further validate the actual temperatures on the new PS5. But it is cooler according to their testing and this is kind of what we needed to see to verify what was going on with the PS5 and whether or not it was any worse or any better. Let me know what you thought. Is light mode hot news better or dark mode hot news better? Argue over that down below in the comments. I'll see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends, after we go over this week in news and you check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we discussed AMD's limitation of the ring bus architecture that they're using on the Zen 3. Chip, chip, Cheerios.